Well, our mission is to um, invest the endowment assets of the college and to um, obviously preserve the principle of the endowment and then to generate returns that can contribute to the operating income of the college um, in, you know, for the foreseeable future um, and you know, for generations to come. Um, we've always been uh, very um, interested in venture capital. We have a long history of inve investing in venture capital. And so, and this is, wasn't necessarily related to the financial crisis, but during that period when people were leaving venture capital, we actually were taking a firm stand in venture capital, um, investing in some emerging managers, and it's done very well for our portfolio. Um, real estate was a tough space for many people, I think, coming out of the financial crisis, especially for endowments of our size who were not doing direct real estate investing, which much larger organizations can do, um, but private partnership investing in real estate was a tough space. Um, for the um, people investing there in the financial crisis. Um, so I think that's been a place where many uh, endowments and foundations and other investors have questioned, you know, how much do we want to deploy in that space? Uh, and whether, you know, do we want to be really opportunistic? Do we want to be investing in development type strategies? Or do we want to be doing more, uh, more conservative value add strategies? So I think those are things that we've asked ourselves. Um, one other thing that has, I think, been taken greater importance in our portfolio has been our hedge fund um, allocation, and we've added there. Uh, we actually increased exposure in um, equity long short managers at a time when I think a lot of people thought, oh, the equity markets are really um, rising. You don't need you don't need people who are doing shorting. Um, we disagreed, and it's actually worked out really well for our portfolio. Um, it gave us a, a, quite a bit of ballast at a time that we needed it. Most of our deal flow comes from my networking to my relationships, um, talking to our general partners, folks that we have built close relationships with, who know the kinds of things that we're looking for, who reference us to their friends, to people they know who are starting new firms or who may be spinning out of places. Um, so it's a very, we, we get a high quality referral to somebody and then we take that very seriously and we'll spend a lot of time due diligence in that. Um, what's really important is that they get across, you know, what is the strategy they're pursuing and why they think they can execute it. And I'm talking maybe about an emerging manager in this case. Um, so they really need to show what they've done in this space in the past. You know, what is their track record in, in the strategy that they're marketing? Um, and, and really showing that track record. So if there's not a portable track record that they have from another place, that's very difficult. So we have seen folks who come out of other organizations where their prior organization won't allow them to show their track record, and that can be difficult. And so if they're doing that, having a whole reference list of folks that they can t you can talk to who may be able to validate it, whether it's companies that they invested in who can then say, oh yeah, this was their investment, here's how the company did. You know, other ways, for, you know, make it easy for investors to find other ways to find the information that you, know, you can't provide is very helpful. Um, also, I think just have, you know, let a few different people read your slides. I mean, the more cohesive and comprehensive your presentation is, the better. Um, because sometimes you'll read things and, it, and it's almost amateurish. And right away, that's a turn off. And, and having things that um, show, show the warts in your presentation as well. You know, show, be really open and transparent. Show net returns in your data. Don't just show gross returns, because the, the biggest question will be, well, what are the net returns? We don't want to just see gross returns. And don't just show you know, four companies that were the biggest winners when you had a portfolio of 12 companies, because it begs the question of, well, what about the other companies? And if there were things that were problems, talk about them. Don't do like three case studies of just the good companies when we know you had one bad company. Do the case study on the bad company and walk through what happened, how did you deal with it. That can go a long way to showing a potential investor, how do you deal with a bad situation? How, how do you, what happened when you made a mistake? Were you, you know, did you have the confidence to actually acknowledge that you made a mistake, learn the lessons from that mistake, and then how did you apply those lessons learned going forward? Um, and that we do 
feel like a, a turn in the market is coming and that um, there will be a, a, a reduction in our returns and we'll, we'll see a downturn. And so as to the extent our managers can exit companies today and realize on some of these businesses, that's our hope. Um, and then otherwise, we just hope that they are being efficient with the capital and that they are getting businesses positioned to weather what's coming. Um, because we've seen this before, um, and, and we're also prepping our investment committee as well, and so letting them know, hey, this is what we think is going to happen, and you, know, you will see if the public markets go down, then you know, private equity, venture capital, they will follow. And you know, we just want everybody to understand this is how this will likely play out. Um, but there will be funds that will raise during that period, and we we don't want to be out of the market during that time. So there's. A